It's a 20 kilometer boat ride from Jindo Island to the wreck site on the fast flowing spring tides of Korea's Yellow Sea. Local fishing boats have been drafted in, helping to clear the oil from the surface. Two weeks on from the disaster, there's a large flotilla gathered here. Korean Coast Guard ships, supply ships, diving barges and Navy ships, both Korean and American. It certainly looks impressive, all of this hardware out here above the site of the wreckage. But some family members have said that the diving operation to recover the bodies has been as slow and as uncoordinated as the initial rescue itself. Greater numbers and greater expertise should have been brought in from the start, they say. But the divers face extraordinary challenges. The current below is treacherous. Visibility is down to just a few centimetres and their access is blocked by floating debris. It's a slow, painstaking job now to bring each body to the surface. As they do so, back in Jindo, the number of family members sleeping in this stadium is falling. For the many that remain, it is a harrowing wait. The news that one body has been recovered almost two kilometres from the wreck has heightened fears that some may never be found. Footage retrieved from mobile phones shows some of the last moments of the students on board. With the ship listing badly, they're still joking. The ship's intercom can be heard telling them to remain where they are. Today, the South Korean Prime Minister, Chung Hong-won, who has already tendered his resignation but is still in post, visited the still-waiting family members. He was not welcomed by all of them. I'd like to make an apology, he said, and I'm here because it's the right thing to explain the situation. But as the desperate search for bodies continues, the wide public perception that incompetence and maladministration are somehow to blame continues to grow. John Sudworth, BBC News, Jindo.